Exercise 4 in Chapter 8. So, this one's a little tricky, but, and, I mean, you can easily get mixed up in all the quantifiers and everything, but, I mean, once you understand how to do it, it's really just a bunch of computation. So let's do those computations. I first claim that for r greater than zero, arf is uniformly continuous. So suppose epsilon is greater than zero. Choose delta greater than zero such that the L infinity norm of ty f minus f is less than epsilon over 2 for all y in the ball of radius delta around 0. The reason for choosing epsilon over 2 rather than just epsilon will be apparent um, later on in this proof. We're not really going to use it in this part. And um, the, we're able to say this because of our assumption on f. Okay, so we've got this. Then, for all x and y in Rn, such that x minus y is less than delta, we have, we want to estimate uh, the difference in norm between arf x and arf y. And so this is equal to, oh man, this is going to be a little hard to write brx, then integral over brx of fz dz minus, then the same thing, but we use the definition for this guy, bry fz dz, and Hmm, maybe if I write over here, I might be able to fit more on this line. But now what are we going to do? We're going to change variables over here. So we want to make this, instead of f of z, we want to make it f of y. So we want, we want to replace z with y. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the change of variables. Let's see here, we're integrating around the ball of radius x. Um, ball of radius r about x, and we want to integrate over the ball of radius r around y. So first what we have to do is we need to go from, like if we're looking at the variable z, we need to go from z to, you sort of have to go from z to x and x to y. When you work it out, it's basically going to be bry fz plus x minus y dz minus, then I'm just going to put a dot here because the thing on the right hand side stays the same. Now I guess you could write this out in a little more detail, like you could write out, um, so if you wanted u to be equal to z plus x minus y, then you would need z over here, you would plug in, eh, I'm not going to go through the whole, like what the actual change of variables is, but if you were to do it, this is what you would get. And so, but what is this? Now what we want to do is we can combine these two integrals because these are both integrals over bry. And we're going to do that and at the same time bring the absolute values inside. So the factor of mbry is going to be factored out of both of them and that's positive so that will just come out of the absolute value fine. And then... Let's see here, this is going to be the integral over, no, 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 we want the absolute value to go inside the integral. So bry, and then we've got, now we could write f of f plus x minus y, you can bring the um, y, x and y over and do this t, tau y minus x, fx minus Oh, that's a z. fz minus fz dz. 
Um, but then what is this? Now look at this uh, integrand on the inside. This is um, this thing. We're integrating over the ball of radius r of y. And let's see here. y minus x is less than delta. So that means that this, so we can kind of plug it into here because these two things, yeah, since x and y, um, x and y both, like the difference between x and y belongs to the ball of radius delta about zero. And so we apply the result here about infinity and we can estimate this by epsilon over two. Or, well, first what we do is we first do the L-infinity estimate. So this is going to be bounded by tau y minus x, f minus f, L-infinity. And um, the integral over this space is going to cancel out with the measure of that ball. And so it's going to be this and then we'll by choice of delta this is less than epsilon over 2 and so hence arf is uniformly continuous on rn because there is one particular delta that works for all x and y in rn and of course this holds for a particular r but then Next, let x be an rn, and r and s between 0 and delta. And because we're looking at two things here, r and s, that's where we're going to use this epsilon over 2. Because we, we want to use the same delta that we used before, um, but I didn't want to be like, okay, so now redefine delta so that the thing we had before works with epsilon over 2 instead of epsilon. Just Keep it as epsilon throughout epsilon over 2 throughout the whole thing. So, anyways, then what do we have? Got another big long computation, so let's get to it. Rfx minus Azfx. That that's not something you can say easily. It is equal to Rfx. And I'm going to put minus plus. 1 over m b r x. Wow, that is really small. Um, yeah, if you can't see that, just go by what I'm, what I'm saying. These are balls of radius r about x. And then a s f of y dy. So yeah, that's going to be another integral inside this integral, but we'll deal with that later. Um, and this is kind of one of those... And of course, we've got this minus a s f x here. Um, so what I mean by minus plus here is that we're going to subtract it and add it back. So this is going to be one of those classic real analysis. You take something, you add it in and subtract it so that you can break this integral up into different things using the triangle inequality. And so now let's do exactly that. It's going to be less than or equal to... Let's see here, well, the, when we look at the minus here, this is ARFx, and so these are both in, integrals over the ball of radius r about x, and they both have that same constant up front, so we can just straight away combine the integrals. And what are we going to get? We're going to get, well, we're going to get f of y here, and we're going to be integrating with respect to y, and then ASFy dy, that's all absolute value, plus, now here we're going to do 1 over m b, let's see here, yeah, is this br? Yeah, that should be br, that's right, 1 over m brx, and then we have absolute value, asfy, minus, ASFX dy. Let me just look at that a little bit more. Mm. 
Yeah. Yeah, that works. So, here we go. We've used the triangle inequality, and here we've even used the triangle inequality again. Like, a well, not the triangle inequality, but we've actually gone another step here and already brought the, um, the absolute value signs inside the integral, which is strangely absent from this. So let's insert that. Oh, let's move these guys over a little. Oh, oh, come on. Get it? Yes. There we go. BRX. And that needs to go back. Okay. But now what is this less than using our estimate? Well, by the same argument as we did earlier, this thing, well, a, that's ASFY minus ASFX, but look at this thing that we did over here. This, we estimated this to be less than epsilon over 2. And these things satisfy the same um, requirements that these do. So we say that this is, we can say that this is less than, so this thing on the right is going to become epsilon over 2. What are we going to do with the thing on the left? Well, let's actually write it out as a full integral. Then we've got f of y minus, and then let's write this guy out. This is ball of radius x around y. That should not be an x. And then this is the integral bsy. F F Z D Z, and then this whole thing dy, that the whole thing absolute value plus epsilon over two. All right, and this is less than or equal to. Let's bring all the absolute values on the inside, um, and let's see here. Yeah, so we're gonna bring. M B R X M B S Y. This is all going to go on the outside. We're going to have one over that. Then we're going to have integral over B R X, integral over B S Y, and then on the inside we're going to have F Y minus F Z D Z D Y. Epsilon over two. That's a horrible fraction. Well, I mean, not only, not only is it a horrible fraction, but it's horribly drawn. So now we've got this, and then let's rewrite this. Um, we're going to do the same thing that we did before, where we've got, oh, we've got f of y minus f of z. Let's change some variables and get a tau in here. So we're going to have 1 over, I'm just going to replace this thing with dot. So 1 over dot. By the way, that's like if you have, like, from elementary school, you know it was like 4 divided by 2 equals 2. The reason that this division sign is here, I mean, I don't know this for sure, but it's like the dots mean this is where you put this stuff. So if you were to put the 4 here and the 2 here, that would be like the fraction 4 over 2. So that's just like, like that's why the division symbol looks so weird. It's because it's just saying, yeah, just do a fraction. Anyways, so this, I might have to look that up to make sure that's actually how it came about. Um, but if we change variables here and we make this um, the ball of radius s around 0, then we get fy minus tau minus z fy dz dy Got that epsilon over 2. That's going to stick with us for the rest of this trip. But this is equal to by Tonelli's theorem because all of these spaces are... See, so we're working on Rn here, I think. I mean, it doesn't really tell us what space we're working on. But, I mean, Fallen really likes sigma finite spaces. So, we're probably working on a sigma finite space. And, yeah, because ARF... Anyways... Yeah, so we can apply Tonelli's theorem is basically what I'm doing here. And we're switching, like that should be your gut reaction, like, oh, we've got a double integral, let's use Tonelli's theorem. 
So this becomes integral over BSO over BRX. Then we've got, um, let's flip the order of these so that it becomes a little bit more obvious what we're doing. Um, but we're also going to at the same time apply the inequality. I guess I didn't do that. Sure, no, no, let's not do that at the same time. Let's do this one step at a time. Tau minus z fy minus fy dy dz plus epsilon over 2. And of course I've spoiled the next trick that we use, and that's just 1 over dot r, and then got bs0, brx, and now we're going to approximate it by the L infinity norm of this difference. But then let's see here, this L infinity norm, we chose delta so that that's less than epsilon over two. And so that's a constant that comes out and everything that's left is, well, we're just, these integrals will cancel out with the fractions that we have. And so this is going to be less than epsilon. Can I fit this on the last time? Um, okay. No, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna make this look a little bad and just put it here and not indent. So I mean, it looks sloppy, but I mean, deal with it. Anyways, so for example, the sequence a n. Like a, okay, that'd be like the sequence a1 over n f. This is uniform, yeah, I'll write it out, uniformly Cauchy. Um, because for n, well, I mean for n large enough so that 1 over n is less than um, delta, then you have, you choose any two n's that are bigger than that n that you choose, and then you choose any x, and then you get this whole estimate by epsilon, and so it's uniformly Cauchy. Um, and thus, um, it converges uniformly, uniformly, to a uniformly continuous function say g and the fact that uniformly of uh, uniformly cauchy sequence converges uniformly to a uniformly continuous function that's just like baby root and stuff so feel free to review if it's not right there um but then by theorem 3.18 um f is in l infinity and so let's see here should be an L1 loc. Yeah. So then, um, theorem 3.18 implies, and that tells us that the limit as R goes to 0 of R of X equals F X almost everywhere. But we just saw that the limit is G. So F equals G almost everywhere. And g is a uniformly continuous function. And so that's exactly what we were trying to prove in the first place. And so we are done.